through that grace given direct access to God, gifted and called and given anointings. So um, in the light of that, I want to share this grace. This grace that saves us also calls us to the work. Go with me in your Bibles to Titus chapter 2. And I'll try and wrap it up in a few minutes. When I say a few minutes, I actually lie. I really mean few in the light of eternity. Verse 11, for the grace of God. Don't you just love that little phrase? The grace of God. God who is rich in grace and mercy. He's rich in it. He abounds in it. For the grace of God that brings salvation, hallelujah, has appeared to all men, teaching us that we to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sunday morning, pastor said it had a sense of urgency. We should always live with a sense of urgency because we are expectant of His soon appearing. It should be embedded in our being in this new creation being. Who gave himself for us, hallelujah, that he might redeem us, hallelujah, from every lawless deed and purify for himself, for himself, for himself, his own special people, zealous for good works. The grace that saves us is the grace that separates us for good works that we pursue passionately. Could you imagine a church where every believer is passionate about the fullness of the Spirit, the proclamation of the gospel? the advance of the kingdom, the fellowship together, the worshiping together, every other thing has been pushed aside, all worldliness, ungodliness, all lusts have been pushed aside and our pursuit is the will of God. Is that too much to ask for in the light of this scripture? No, this is God's intention for the church. This is how we ought to be. The grace that saves us, separates us to be passionately involved in the works of God. In fact, he says, speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Rebuke what? The opposition, anything contrary to this should be rebuked. Like I said, we're full gospel, half gospel. We want the good parts, but we want to avoid the other parts. We want to avoid, depart from me, you wicked and lazy. When we read up to the good work, stop. Speak these things, exhort, okay, I'll take that. And rebuke with all authority. Like don't just rebuke, but rebuke with all authority. That will empty the church quickly. Let no one despise you. Despise you when? When you're doing this, challenging them when they're living contrary to this. Don't let them despise you. (laughs) The amazing grace saves us and engages us to be zealous in doing good works. Grace doesn't save us to be indifferent. Grace doesn't save us to be passionless. Grace doesn't save us into a spectator 
audience mentality. But he saves us into an empowered life that is a mobilized life into the service of God. Now let me be quite clear. We are not saved by what we do. We are saved by what he has done. We are saved by what He has done for us that we could not do for ourselves. We are saved by Him doing for us which we were unable to do. But that doesn't mean we've got nothing to do. We have a lot to do. Not for salvation, but because we are the product of salvation. Let me close with this one. (laughs) Ephesians 2, it's well known, but bear with me. In verse 4, but God, aren't you glad, who is rich in mercy because of his great love. (laughs) It's love that has won our hearts. It is love that sustains us. And it is our love response to His love that engages us in what we have to do. It is not forced upon us to as many as received Him. To them He gave the right to be. You don't have to assume the rights. You can attend. You can be part of the audience. But if you want God's best, in God's destiny, then you'll need to step up to a higher place. This is deep cries out to deep. This is God's appeal to the recreated spirit. I've saved you by grace because I love you. And I've called you by grace because I love you. But you're going to have to assume this. I'm not going to force it on you. He loved us even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which He prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. When it says we should walk in them, it means to conduct yourself in that manner of lifestyle. So you're saved into a lifestyle as an artistic masterpiece of God serving in these works. It is your lifestyle. I love the Phillips translation of Ephesians 2.4. It says, we are born afresh in Christ and born to do those good deeds which God planned for us to do. We are born to this that God has given to us and planned for us before the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. We're not saved by our works. We are saved from the grip of Satan. We're saved from the penalty, the power, and the punishment of sin. We are called out of darkness. We are called into the work of God. You can't just be called out of without being called into. You will live in a space called neutrality. There is no neutral zone. There is no spiritual Switzerland. You're either in the kingdom or you're in the world. If you're in the kingdom, you're part of the team. You're part of the team. I said you're part of the team. You're part of the body. You have a role to play. You are not a spectator. You are not an observer. You're not just a recipient. You are a participant. You're a recipient 
and you're a participant. You're a part of the team, a part of the body. And you have something that God has given you to do. And without you doing that, you are living, frustrating your spirit man. You're always seeking something to satisfy that will only be satisfied, as Pastor said, by doing the will of God. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. It's action to do the will of God. Meat, food, sport, entertainment, hobbies, possessions cannot permanently satisfy you. They'll satisfy you for a split second. But that which satisfies the human spirit is doing the will of God. And Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him who, who, uh, the will of him and to finish his work, to complete the work. That which satisfies is to complete the work, not just to start it. Many Christians start, but they then get enticed away. They don't finish the work the end of Jesus' life, he could say it is finished. He did what God gave him to do. Jesus began both to teach and to do, and he finished it with, it is finished. He did his part. We are the continuum of his life on earth. We are carriers of his power, of his word, of his light, of his love, of his grace, of his mercy. Hallelujah. It's been poured into us for them. For them. Stand with me, let us pray, please. I've done my best to persuade you tonight, and I believe you have received it. I have not felt any resistance. I, I can promise you that, because if I felt resistance, I'd go after it. You understand, I'm, I'm an aggressive man. I will go after resistance. I'm not intimidated by in, uh, resistance. I will go after that force of darkness that would blind someone, but I haven't felt that, so this is not a condemnation to you in any way. I have felt you have drawn the word. I have given the word with the best that I have. I have felt you pulling the word. I haven't felt resistance in any of you. I have felt you absorbing it, embracing it. You are here because you are hungry. You are here because you want this. You are here because you have dreamed of this. You know when you are called, you dream. You are bigger on the inside than you appear on the outside. There is destiny locked inside of you. There is God's gift inside of you. There is God's authority inside of you. There is God's power inside of you. You don't just speak in other tongues. You are a carrier of power. Hallelujah. I feel like tonight what we need to do is reactivate our lives in the empowered walk of service. If somehow you have found yourself living in that neutral zone of spectatorship, if you found yourself having been lured away from the work, there was a time when you worked, there was a time when you served, but something happened, you got hurt, you got offended, you got disappointed, maybe you just got sucked away by the enticement of uh, carnality, whatever it is. But tonight you find yourself standing here saying, I'm hungry, I want my destiny revived, I want to be restored, I, I'm so bored, I'm so dissatisfied, nothing satisfies me. I look at stuff on TV and I, I watch it but, and in my mind just this is nothing and I, everything I put my hand to bores me. You, you're only going to be satisfied. Hear the word of the Lord. You will only be satisfied doing the will of God. And if you are dissatisfied and you're living lower than what God has called you to be, I want you to come stand up front here. Let me pray for you and break that thing off your life. Just come on down right now. Just step into this place and let us pray for you.